Hi, sixth graders. We are so excited to be back at Lewis and Clark again this year. And we wanted to introduce ourselves a little bit to you through this video because we couldn't introduce ourselves fully on um, our back to school night tonight. So we are sharing some information that might help you be more successful in sixth grade this year. And before we forget, uh, parents and students, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Remember, you can always get in touch with us several different ways, phone call, email, use the Remind app, uh, text message, whatever, whatever works for you. So please ask questions as they come up. And as you're watching this, if you want to jot down any questions you have as we go along, it's a good idea. So as we've done um, last year also, Mr. Lloyd is going to be teaching all sixth graders science and math. He has some um, new science curriculum um, that is very engaging and keeps you active with lots of information and experiments along the way. And then math is um, your algebra, some review of fractions from last year and geometry and statistics. I get to do my favorite things with you with ELA. We'll do lots of writing and lots of reading. And then at the end of the year, we will do impromptu speeches in preparation for the speech meet. Social studies for sixth graders is ancient history. And so we get to travel around the world and learn how our people um, have grown into cultures and different uh, places. So I'm Mr. Lloyd, and just to tell you a few things about myself, um, as you can see probably from the pictures there, I like to be outdoors as much as possible. Um, I'm married to a Mrs. Lloyd who uh, teaches at Great Falls High, so you might get a chance to meet her in your future educational career. Uh, Mrs. Lloyd and I love to go biking or hiking, camping, just getting outdoors, enjoying the beautiful state. Um, I volunteer with Big Brothers Big Sisters. And if I have some downtime, if you see that picture of the dogs laying in the sun there, that's my favorite spot in the house to read. Sometimes you get a dog that curls up in your, uh, in your legs and it's just a real nice way to kill an afternoon. So just a little bit about me. Looking forward to getting to know you guys. And this is me and my family. We spend lots of time outside also. Um, we're very involved in sports. My son is a sophomore at Great Falls High and I'm um, getting started with his sports for this year. My daughter, as you can tell from the picture, graduated a little bit over a year ago from Great Falls High and now is a proud Grizz at University of Montana. We do lots of hiking and camping in the summer together as a family. And of course, I love to read and I try to find as many different types of books to read every summer in particular. So sixth grade is gonna be a, a really fun year, but it does come with a lot of responsibilities. So kids, uh, we will be expecting, um, you know, sixth grade might feel like a little bit of a quickened or increased pace. Um, and we do expect kids to keep up with it and you certainly will be capable. Um, we'll give you all the tools you'll need to be successful. But just to kind of give you some expectations, um, we will be sending homework home every week. Uh, there's kind of two parts to homework. There's a homework menu, which is on a gold sheet, and you'll get a choice to choose a few different items each week. They're pretty short tasks. They just allow you to engage a little more deeply with the material. And we also send uh, spelling home, spelling lists home every week. And it's pretty straightforward. There's kind of the same type of idea about different ways you can uh, practice your spelling words. Um, <clears throat> we do expect kids to be uh, responsible for their learning and to let us know when they're stuck, when they're, when they need some help, when you don't understand something, you know, just communicate and we'll figure it out together. Um, sixth graders are definitely responsible for your behavior. Uh, you're the oldest kids in the school. And so we want to set a positive tone and make sure we're, uh, appropriate role models for the little guys. Um, sixth grade does move quickly. We try to give you as much, uh, class time as as you need to get your work done, but um, you've got to use that time wisely. I mean, you can't just uh, always wait till the last second and expect to get things done in a quality way. So keep that in mind as we get started in this year. And then just probably the most important attitude in learning is just coming in with the, uh, the most important impact on your learning is probably just coming in with a, a positive attitude and being um, comfortable with 
engaging and challenging yourself and, uh, and being willing to, to give your best effort every single day. A huge thing to help uh, parents also know where their kids are at in their schoolwork is to use PowerSchool. I have been using PowerSchool for probably most of a decade by now. Um, help just watching where my kids' grades are. It is a fabulous tool so you can keep up to date, uh, literally by the minute sometimes, and definitely by the week of where your kids are, any missing work that they have, and knowing that they're always here at school. So please, please, find, if you aren't already part of PowerSchool, Get on Power School, sign up so that you can see where your kids' grades are at all time and use that as part of the communication tool between you, your kids, and us. So let's talk a little bit about some school procedures. This is just kind of school building wide and this slide in particular has got uh, student driven info and then the next slide is going to talk more about parents and visitors. Um, but this. Uh, just kind of like last year, we're still dealing with the COVID stuff, and so things are still not quite 100% normal. Um, we are kind of shifting a little bit toward normal. We're, some of the procedures are going to be a bit different from last year, but um, probably feel pretty similar. Um, and one thing just to keep in mind as I go through some of these procedures and as we get ourselves into these habits in the beginning of the year, um, the school district is monitoring the situation in the community, and so as the as the numbers change, as our COVID, you know, um, rates change in our in our county, the school district is gonna is gonna change, and, and they're gonna review that every single week. So, you know, whether for better or worse, things are gonna be changing all throughout the year. And just just to help all of us be on the same page, let's all start with a positive attitude and an understanding of you know we're in this together. We're gonna get through it. So, uh, right now for elementary schools, masks are required. Um, that's based on a case rate in a in the county. Uh, Similar to last year, we're going to try to keep ourselves at least three to six feet apart, three feet apart for kids, six feet apart for adults uh, throughout the school day. That's, you know, traveling in the hallways, that's sitting in the classroom, that's in PE. We're going to try to keep that distance as much as possible. Uh, that said, we, are, we do have an opportunity to do some like partner work and small group work. We'll just do it with masks on and make it make it fit, uh, you know, still trying to get as much of the learning experiences as we can. Uh, similar to last year, we are going to ask, we're going to open the doors at 8.10 and uh, that 8.10 to 8.25 is kind of the arrival time and kids are going to come just straight into the building and, and, and walk straight into their classroom. Uh, we'd ask that you enter the door that's closest to the sixth grade hallway. If you're not familiar, that's um, doors that face uh, Central Avenue. Um, <clears throat> and if you don't get it right on the very first day or two, that's okay. We'll, we'll get it sorted out. Uh, pretty quick but we do want to try to keep that traffic in the hallway to a minimum um, so coming in at that north door that faces central avenue um, and then we will be switching classes or students i should say will be switching classes for different subjects so as we discussed mr lloyd's teaching math and science mrs harrington's teaching ela and social studies and so we'll just as a group all get up line out in the hallways and do a little swapping and again we'll practice all this for the first few days so that it, it goes smoothly as we as we get into the school year so that's kind of all the procedures for students and students we will practice all this extensively so don't feel like you have to memorize this right away I just want to give you a big overview and some information for the parents um some things have stayed the same and some things have also changed for you we're still asking you to check in at the office window um, we are allowing parents that are coming in for volunteers and for specific uh, school tasks to come into the building. But just because of the COVID numbers, it's easier if we keep it at the office window. So just like last year, there seemed to be a pretty simple process. Um, we're asking you to check in there. Uh, and if you do come into the building, any of the elementaries, we need to wear masks. Uh, that can change just like with the kids. The departures, so you know where to pick up your kids, is that our kids do go out that north door out to Central. If you are uh, picking them up directly here at school, please park on um, our side of the Central so that the kids don't have to cross the street if at all possible. 
kids will be, all kids will be leaving at that door. If they have to go around to pick up their younger siblings, they're gonna be walking around outside just like they did last year to um, pick up their younger siblings. So I guess if you also have a second grader along with a sixth grader, you might want to meet them down by the second grade door. That might be easiest for all of you, but it's the exact same procedure we used last year. And just for your information and um, to ease your mind, yes, we are still doing extra cleaning and extra sanitizing every day. Uh, just like last year, we'll have all of our desks completely cleared off at the end of the day because they will be spraying them for sanitizing at the end of the day. And we will just do extra cleaning to keep us as safe as possible. So let's talk about the schedule. Um, this is the big layout. This would be um, <clears throat> a Monday through Friday kind of schedule with Wednesdays being our early out. But let's go through it uh, real quick here. So we'll start every day kind of as a warm up, a morning meeting, kind of a, um, you know, wake our brains up, get, get started, get ourselves in the mindset of school. We'll do a first period, which would be science or ELA, excuse me, math or ELA. Um, from 8.45, 9.45, and then second period right after that for that, that next hour. Same thing, it would be math or ELA. Um, then we'll take a break for recess. So kind of a two hour chunk in the morning, then a break. Uh, then we have another period, then another break where we'll either go from 12 o'clock to 12.30, those specials, that means like PE, music class, counseling, um, those types, that's what we mean by specials. So you got a half hour kind of change of pace there. And then this is where it gets a little bit strange. So um, our lunch, it's tough to schedule seven different uh, grade levels in, a, in one cafeteria in a short amount of time. So, you know, at, at every year, one grade level kind of gets the short end of the stick. And this year it's kind of sixth graders where our, our schedule gets a little wacky. So we've got, um, it'll be like, we'll have specials at 1230 and then we'll come back to the classroom from 1230 to 1245 just enough time to kind of get started on a social studies or science activity. Then we'll take a break for lunch. And then at 1.20, we'll resume that social studies or science course. So it'll be a little weird. We'll have like 10 or 15 minutes to kind of get ourselves geared up and then we'll come back and, and finish it off in after lunch. Um, and then at two o'clock, we have our afternoon recess. And then for uh, that last, uh, that block between 2.15 and 3.15, that's ELA, that's language intervention and math inter intervention. And if you don't know what that means, that's just a way where we group students by uh, skill level and we work on language skills and math skills that are really appropriate to just kind of reinforce some skills, um, help them build themselves up, give them some challenges at their level, that kind of thing. So, and then the last five minutes are just kind of a tidy up, clean up and get yourself ready to go home kind of a thing. So. Um, we do have, if you're in band and orchestra, we do have practices on Tuesdays and Fridays, and those are 45 minutes each. So look forward to that. So bring your instruments and whatever other, you know, your books and your instruments and other gear on Tuesdays and Fridays. And then, like I said, early out every single Wednesday at 2.40. So um, think about that if you're picking your kids up. Think about that 2.40 on Wednesdays. Um, but that's about it for the schedule. Moving on. All right, here is our good supply list. Yes, there's a more detailed one that you can pick up um, either online on the GFPS website or at any of the stores. But most important is please make sure that your child has a zippered binder. The reason why we want them zippered is while they're carrying it from class to class that we don't want all their papers falling out and that type of a thing. So please bring that. Uh, we would like them to have three notebooks for three of their forming classes. Pencils, pencils, pencils. Uh, that usually starts off really well, but please remember to ask your kids every so often throughout the year to, if you need to resupply them with more pencils. And then the things that we use uh, off and on throughout the year would be colored pencils, scissors, rulers. We do have that really late lunch, so please send a healthy snack for your child anytime in, that they can eat it in the morning. Um, we'll give them a little bit of time to do that. Water bottles, please send a water bottle with them. They can fill it up here in the classroom now. We've had our water system redone and um, sending them cold water in the morning is great. And then that last thing is now we do not supply 
um, any headphones for the kids. So please send earbuds so that they can use it with their Chromebooks. All right. And um, when you go into back to school night tonight at the school, there are some there is some paperwork we'd like you to sign. Um, you can sign it. You can take it home and bring it back on uh, the first day or whenever it's convenient. But uh, please do take a look at everything and, and give it a give it a quick once over. Um, Student handbook is really important. It's just an agreement about behavior and expectations and all that kind of stuff. The web 2.0 is just that our various, we just need permission to let, uh, to create student accounts for different activities that we do throughout the year. Um, the school breakfast and free and reduced lunch. That free and reduced lunch, I will point out, we've been told that the um, that the qualification has expanded. And so there's, they're really encouraging everybody to apply, even if you don't feel like you fit the income bracket. Um, apparently that program has been broadened out a little bit so it might be something to look into and uh just check enrollment info for accurate address and phone numbers and all that just to make sure that we're not that we're able to communicate accurately and then just keep in mind i mean one our part of our philosophy here is that you parents are our partners in your kids learning and really really important to keep uh, teachers and parents on the same page make sure that we are all uh you know doing everything we can to make sure that the kids are successful so, and then our contact issue is, contact info is right there, speaking of communicating. So if you haven't done so, um, probably the easiest thing for us as teachers is to have everyone on the remind list because it's just a simple kind of texting feature and we can blast out messages real nice and we don't have to send 25, 26 different messages. So if you don't mind, it would be really helpful if you haven't already to please sign up and you can just text that number 81010 on your phone and enter in that little, each of our little codes there. Um, but you can always use our school email and also our um, school phones as well. Uh, also, just keep heads up. We do have open house on, in that first week of October. And then parent-teacher conferences, the first ones will be in the, I think it's the third week of October. So just a couple things to keep in mind. And that is the end of the presentation. And I am really looking forward to this school year. I. I am really looking forward to taking a couple steps back toward normal and, and getting to know you guys. And I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. Yep, it will be a great year. All right. Well, we'll see you guys on Wednesday and have a great last couple days of summer. <laughs>